Christmas is all about traditions. Every year we pull out the traditional decorations, the music, the ugly sweaters, and of course the traditional movies and specials. Everyone has their favorites, be it Rudolph or Die Hard. So here are my top nine favorite Christmas movies and television specials. Now, I really only have one hard and fast rule with this list. Only things that come on TV from Thanksgiving to New Year's get on the list. Sadly, this leaves out things like The Nightmare Before Christmas because while that is a Christmas movie, it's also kind of a Halloween movie. Also, this is my list, so I fully expect people not to agree with everything that's on it. Now, there may even be comments like, why isn't this movie or that special on the list? Or, how could you have left off, insert favorite film or television special of choice here? Well, the fact of the matter is, I may not like your particular favorite myself and therefore decided to not include it on this list. This is a list of my favorites, the ones that I will drop everything to watch. If you don't like it, what's on this list, well, make your own. That said, let's get on with the festivities, shall we? Number nine. We're going out the good old fashioned way. Guns a brazen. Gonna burn, burn, burn those calories off. Well, he may be the devil, but he sure knows how to fill his day. I'll admit, this one is cheating a bit, as Mystery Science Theater left television screens back in 2002. But I do pull out the two Christmas episodes every year. MST3K might be more well-known for their Turkey Day marathons than for these episodes, but they are a great example of what MST3K did well, making bad movies more enjoyable. The Satellite of Love Gang did two Christmas movies during their 10-year run on TV. The spectacularly bad Santa Claus Conquers the Martians and the slightly saner Santa Claus. Of the two of them, I like Santa Claus a bit better. I find it a bit more watchable, although Martians does have my favorite crow line. What about you, crow? I want to decide who lives and who dies. Huh? Oh, I don't know. Both episodes are great, though, and both of them do have a certain heart to them that you usually find in all the best Christmas shows. There's even some memorable music, like the Tumblr-approved Merry Christmas, if that's okay, and the immortal Let's Have a Patrick Swayze Christmas. If you're looking for something to watch that will drown out the family for a little while this year, look no further than the MST3K Christmas episodes. Three hours of good, wholesome snark. Number eight. Who's that? Sandy Polish. Welcome to the family, Buster. <laughs> Look at his relatives already, huh? <laughs> White Christmas is one of the undisputed classics of Christmas movies. The film stars Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye. Kaye was one of the most popular comedians of the 40s and early 50s. If you want a comparison, think of an early Robin Williams and you'll have a good idea of what Kaye's on-screen persona is like. Crosby was an established singer and film actor when this movie was made. His road movies with co-star Bob Hope were very popular in the 40s. Along for the ride in this one are Rosemary Clooney, aunt of George Clooney, and Vera Ellen. The main quartet does a wonderful job on the whole, and while Kay's more manic style is abandoned here for a more subtle approach, it's still a fun movie to watch at this time of year. A short word about the music here, mostly written by Irving Berlin with a little help from Gus Levine, Joseph J. Lilly, and Van Cleave, the music is just as well known as the movie itself. Of course, the centerpiece tune, White Christmas, gets its fair share of the spotlight with a nice music box style arrangement in the beginning of the movie and a grander version during the finale. I also like to point out the numbers Counting Your Blessings and Choreography as two of my personal favorites. Overall, even after 60 years, this movie still holds up well and is deserving of its status as a Christmas classic. Number 7. Papa, Mama, he's, he's got a shiny nose. It's a, it's a shiny? I'd even say it glow. 
Back in 1964, the fledgling Rankin Bass Studios came out with a Christmas special based on the popular Christmas song Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Originally written in the 1940s, the song itself was based on a promotional story given out by Woolworths. Think a proto-Walmart. The special features the talents of Burl Ives, a well-known folk singer at the time, and put Rankin Bass on the map. They ended up producing a number of holiday specials over the years, most of them pretty unmemorable on the whole. This special, however, proved so popular that it even spawned a sequel, Rudolph and Frosty's Shiny New Year, which is all but forgotten these days. Still, the original remains a classic to this day, no matter what some people might think of it. Number six. Oh dear, this high infant mortality rate. Another slight cheat on my part, this one comes from across the pond in England. Blackadder is a popular comedy series over there detailing the lives of the greedy but failure-prone Blackadder and his perpetual sidekick slash dog's body, Baldrick. In this particular case, Blackadder is the nicest man in England and gets taken advantage of constantly. Until the Christmas Eve when he's shown some of the other lives that he's led and decides that being a greedy bastard is much more sensible. Blackadder's Christmas Carol is a genuinely funny special and it also doubles as a pretty decent introduction to the series as a whole. Highly recommended for all people who find most Christmas specials far too cloying to be enjoyable. Number 5. Full disclosure, I'm one of those women who actually likes ballet. I hardly ever get to see it, but when I do, it's always a treat. And fortunately for me, this time of year, there's always at least one company performing this Christmas classic. Written in 1892 by Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky for the Marinsky Ballet, it was originally based on a story written by German writer E.T.A. Hoffman. Like all the best stories, it's pretty simple. A young girl receives a nutcracker for Christmas, and that night has a dream that the nutcracker comes to life and spirits her away to a magical land where the locals dance for her amusement. The real fun of this ballet comes in how the company chooses to perform it. Sometimes the results are pretty standard for ballet, but sometimes they're downright weird. But however they decide to do things, the artistry of the dancers is on full display, and that's what makes Nutcracker such a joy to watch. Number four. I mean, sorry, Christmas Eve on a rooftop, saw a chimney, my whole brain just went, what the hell? So it will probably come as no surprise that I'm a Doctor Who fan. And with that comes the yearly anticipation of the annual Doctor Who Christmas special. I've very rarely been disappointed by these looking at you at Town Call Christmas. Most of the time, it's a nice break from the stories that occupy the rest of the show. They've even made it a tradition to do the regeneration episodes for the current series as Christmas specials, which is kind of nice. This year, we'll see the return of River Song to the show, so we'll have to see how that goes. Either way, I'll be tuning in just like I did last year. Number three. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. It may not be the best animated special, or the best acted, but damn if it doesn't have a ton of heart and a really good soundtrack. A Charlie Brown Christmas is a perennial classic, and for the very simple reason that it's pretty darn simple all by itself. Animated by former Warner Brothers animator Bill Melendez and based on cartoonist Charles Schultz's Peanuts comic strip with a soundtrack by jazz legend Vince Guaraldi. This was the first animated Christmas special to be aired on primetime television. It's typical true meaning of Christmas stuff, but for something that's 50 years old at this point, it still packs an emotional punch that makes it a tradition worth looking forward to. Number 2. Merry Christmas, Uncle. I said Merry Christmas, Uncle. <laughs> Humbug. I was originally just going to put the Muppet version of the Dickens tale on this list, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense to just put in any version tag on it. 
It's hard to screw up Charles Dickens' novella about how the miserly Ebenezer Scrooge learns to stop being a jerk and love Christmas. In fact, a lot of the traditions and sentiments that we associate with this time of year can be traced back to this story. And even the worst and oddest versions of this tale tend to stick to what makes the story work in the first place. The idea that humans can be better if we choose to change ourselves for the better, and by extension, the people around us as well. As for my own favorite versions, the Muppet version is pretty darn good overall. The George C. Scott version is a good version if you like things to stick pretty close to the source material. And the Alistair Sim version is easily one of the best versions. But whatever version you like, be it a more classical interpretation or something a little more contemporary, you'll be hard-pressed to find a better expression of the Christmas spirit. See what I did there? Number one. Every who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. All right, let's be honest here, people. There's always at least one point during the holiday season where every one of us starts to think some very unpleasant thoughts about our fellow man. And here's a character with, that we can all relate to during those moments. All the Grinch wants is a little peace and quiet, and he happens to have some of the noisiest neighbors around. Seriously, dude lives on top of a mountain, and he can still hear all the go stuff that's going on down in Whoville. New Year's Eve must be a nightmare, never mind the 4th of July. Of course, most of us probably wouldn't resort to straight-up stealing everything our annoying neighbors owned to get that peace and quiet, but that's not what this special is really about. It's your bog-standard meaning of Christmas story again, although it's a little different this time, what with the grand larceny and all, but this one's short and simple. Produced and directed by animation legend Chuck Jones, with the lyrics for the song being written by the original story's author, Dr. Seuss, this one has Jones' unique style all over it. Jones started out as an animator for Warner Brothers, and that's where he grew to prominence. How the Grinch Stole Christmas has all of the Jones hallmarks, fast-paced comedy, slightly squishy-looking characters, and a heaping helping of visual humor. Special mention must be made, however, for the great Boris Karloff, who does the narrating duties for this one. He alternates between the sweeter and more sour parts of the story well, and his accent lends an air of class to the proceedings. Of course, Karloff isn't doing all the vocalizing for this show. June Foray, who is the voice of Little Cindy Lou Who, was also the voice of Rocky the Squirrel from the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoons. And of course, there's the centerpiece song, sung by Thurl Ravenscroft, who was also the voice of Tony the Tiger. That said, this one still has quite a bit of heart to it, and the tone never gets too preachy, which is a problem that quite a few specials have. And just so we're clear, I flat out refuse to watch that other version. Pointless piece of crap, don't even know why they made this stupid thing. And that's it. Have a happy and safe whatever it is you celebrate at this time of year, and I will see you next year. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some cookies to bake. Thank you.